All righty then. <laughs> Welcome back. Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty if you feel so inclined. We're gonna jump uh jump into some San Diego charges. They're not in San Diego anymore. Nope, they're not. San home. Diego. Change that address, mailing address, there, buddy. A whale's vagina. <laughs> <laughs> update. That's what that means. Update your mailing list. The the L.A. Clippers. That's who we're gonna talk about right now. We're going to get into some Mike Williams, little Tyrell Williams, yep. the Williams brothers the from another mother. The Chargers forgotten men over there behind Keenan Allen and Melvin Gordon. The forgotten right. soldiers. So uh, who you want to go first here? Should we give Tyrell his due? Let's give Tyrell the nod. He's a veteran. The veteran. He's a veteran. Seems to really be coming into his own, right? Well, he was already in his own. He's he in. had his own. He had his time. Two years ago, Keenan Allen got hurt. Tyrell Williams was a thing. You could start him every week. Had 1,000 yards, eight, seven or eight touchdowns. He was crushing. 69 receptions. He was a gazelle. You hit him on a small crossing route. He could take it forever. You could throw it deep. He was fast as hell. Like, that was Tyrell Williams. Right. And then, last year, Keenan Allen comes back, and Tyrell Williams struggles. Doesn't get the targets that he did the year before. Has a couple of really meager efforts to catch some long balls that were there. The ball was in the right spot. He had some position there. You He's know. never been the contested catcher. Yeah. Well, like we, you know, we talk about 50, 50 balls and there was times there's 50, 50 balls. That is a thing. That's a, that's a real thing. And, but sometimes the ball's in the position and there's body, but there's a position that the, the pass is there and it's more like an 80, 20, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like, it's not really the 50-50 anymore. Like, he should catch that. He's there. All he's got to do is jump up and grab it and put his hands on it. And there was a couple times there last year where he looked, he didn't play as big. I mean, he's 6'4", right. but, you know, 205, soaking wet. Right. So he's slender. Very. And so he's not exactly, he's playing lighter than that even, you right. know. Playing, playing. He plays smaller than he, he's almost like a Deshaun Jackson out there. In a, playing in like a, a bean pole. Big body. And tall, tall Deshaun Jackson, exactly. Right. And, you Won't know. Won't go up for the ball. But but that's kind of changing this year. You've seen him he's, go up and make some incredible catches. That that touchdown versus Cleveland when he had three defenders on him. Right. That was more like a 20-80. That, that was more like a 20 That was a 20 <laughs> ball. And he took that. And it should have been an interception, but he just wrestled it away from that guy. Yeah. And I don't know if he's just been working on his hands. They seem pretty strong, like, on the... He was kind of a one-trick pony in the past, with that one trick being pretty awesome. It's a good trick. Getting open deep downfield. Well, like, he's got that shallow cross. You mentioned the shallow because cross. Because when he catches the ball, he does run like a gazelle. So it's really... if you You can watch the highlight tape on this guy. When he catches the ball, it's not that he breaks tackles. It's that... He breaks contact. Like there's mm-hmm. no people don't really get their hands on him when he starts striding and running across the field with the ball in his hands. A lot of times people can't get their hands on him for you know forever. It feels like so it's not like he's out there breaking tackles. He's just making guys miss and he's running around people. And so yeah, he he was more like a trick and a half. Mm-hmm. You know, trick and a half pony. Sure. I'll, okay, I'll concede. Okay, trick and a half. One point five tricks. But I think he's up that. I think he's got a couple more tricks in his bag. You see him coming back to the ball. You see you see that 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 uh, cor- uh, is it a comeback route working well in his favor, which should if you got that kind of speed. Exactly. Yeah, it should be the easiest route you can run. The back shoulder fade. The the touchdown that he had in this past game where he it was just perfect timing and the footwork to stay in bounds and to contort his body back and go low. He had he had to fight off the defender and, and wax off that hand to get even free to make the catch. It was a great catch. And that, that great throw that's and not catch. something he's going to have in his arsenal his second year in the league after catch, getting seven targets as a rookie with Phillip Rivers. When Keenan Allen goes down, Tyrell Fair. Williams was no name. We didn't know who he was, and all of a sudden he was awesome. Two years later, he's got some back shoulder fade coming in his game, and that's good. You want to see a young man working on his craft. And especially spending more time, they they we made a big deal in the offseason about how underrated he was and the fact that the Chargers signed him to put that second-round tender on right. him. So the Chargers showed you that they liked this guy a lot to say – you know, this we're going to put a second round tender on him that you don't just do that for for just, you know, somebody that you don't have a lot of faith in. Right. And not to mention Keenan Allen's injury history. They're like, we need to keep some depth around here. A la, we drafted Mike Williams with the seventh pick overall two years ago, you know, year Absolutely. before last. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's coming around. He's growing up. He's grow maybe growing into that six, four frame, learning from some mistakes, had some some weak 
attempts at catching the ball a couple times last year in some big spots, maybe even a couple. I remember at least a handful of drops where it was a bigger play that could have been whether or not there was a guy there to call it a contested catch or not. It should have been caught. Mm -hmm. And those are types of things that just makes you when you're playing dynasty football and Casey and I had Tyra Williams on a bunch of our rosters last year. And when you're playing dynasty football and you see this happening on limited attempts, by the way, because this is a down target year because Keenan Allen was healthy. Keenan Allen was just murdering catches, just getting all the, the targets in the world last year, especially second half of the season. And when you get the attempt, when you get the target and you're dropping it, and you know, especially if you catch it, all you gotta do is catch it and you're just like 50 yards and a touchdown. Come on, man. You know, right. so like it's the confidence dropper. You know, he's dropping the ball and I'm dropping my confidence in him right. over here. So, and I think that's, I think we saw that play out in the dynasty community this year. He obviously came in, um, you know, as a very underrated wide receiver, but under underappreciated. No push. respect. No respect. And this year, last month, <laughs> Got to get that R-E-S-P-E-C-T. <laughs> Clocking in at a lower 187th, 187th pick in DLF mock drafts for October. And, of course, that was October, early October, before he got on his heater where he's got four touchdowns in the last three weeks, and he's heating up with the Chargers. And I, I, it's, I think, obviously, you got to catch the ball to make these plays, but the Chargers themselves have gotten hot. They're heating up. Phillip Rivers' confidence is never down in himself, mm-hmm. but the whole team's playing good right now. Obviously, the first couple weeks of the season, everything went through the running backs and Keenan Allen. And, I mean, Austin Eckler and Melvin Gordon were just setting the league on fire. Last couple weeks, you've seen Austin Eckler come back to earth a little bit. Melvin Gordon's still a beast. He didn't mm. miss a game, but it's went through some of these wide receivers and, and, and Tyrell Williams being one of them. Right. So I mean, you uh, you gotta appreciate if he's on your bench and you've held on to him, you gotta appreciate what he's been doing for you the last month. There's no doubt about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, four touchdowns in the last three games, five on the year, only 29 targets, 22 receptions, 451 yards. It's a lot of yards on that little bit of catches. Oh, his catch rate, his ca- his average yards per catch is all like it was 17. He crushes too. the A dot. He kills the A dot. <laughs> <laughs> and and he kills the yak too right. it, on a limited. He's not his yak, 118 yards after the catch this year, but on limited catches. That's on what 22. I was about. His his yak total numbers will never be Golden Tate because he doesn't get the targets. Right. But when he does catch something low across the middle, or you know maybe he started out far right, far on the right hand side and doesn't catch it till he crosses the left hash because Philip Rivers is patient and he'll let him clear all the way across and clear those zones out. And then maybe the, the two guys on the left hand sides cleared him out, and they he hits Tyrell Williams, and Ty, and then he's off in the races. So he's not going to get the quantity of targets to add up yak totals, but his average yak per catch is real solid. Right. The thing I think that's most intriguing about Tyrell is that he's going to be a free agent next year. Now you can look at that both ways. Leaving Phil Philip Rivers in Correct. this predominant offense could look to be looked at not necessarily as a plus but it is a little crowded there's a lot of options for philip rivers melvin gordon is awesome in the passing game keenan is a target hog mike williams a seventh overall pick coming into his own this year right Um, and then there's a tight end that everybody loves that might be able to get on the field one day which is crazy yeah that it's going to be pretty soon i think that he's coming back from this acl it's well they never put him on ir i know it's ridiculous he he could return for the playoffs crazy which would be kind of dumb for the chargers but the chargers been haven't had this you know playoff window since before lt ladanian thomason retired right and so i i would it wouldn't surprise me at all if they rush this tight end back if they they make the playoffs yeah uh, it looks like that's what they're going to do. That seems like it's been the plan. So Tyrell is is going to be a free agent next year, and then he's going to be probably a fairly sought after commodity with the with the way he's playing this year and the skill set that he has. I could see him getting paid, and I could see you getting a boost in value, no doubt, from this guy if you have him and you hold him. Right? He's been on a heater the last four games. There's there's a sandwiched in between two ten point games as a twenty one and a twenty seven point game, so he's on a heater. Uh, I don't I guess the time to to buy him is kind of it's not really past. He's probably you probably can still acquire him. Obviously not as cheap 
as you once could have. Well, definitely not as cheap as you could have got him last month, no doubt. But uh, you know, somebody like me who's had Tyra Williams in the on a short bench league, you've seen uh, in the FFPC leagues that Casey and I are in, he was in the roster, he was in the draft in a handful of leagues last year because he didn't make the sixteen cut. He didn't make the sixteen round cut. Right, uh, sixteen guys on your team. Um, but so, but in the last four weeks in this heater that he's been on, um, that he hadn't had more than four targets. He's just doing work with those targets, you know, like last week. I mean, obviously they go into Seattle, they get an early lead and they just try to ride it out. They do get the victory. So it's not like the, you know, even Phillip Rivers was just throwing the ball all over the place, but the Chargers had a very, very solid win in Seattle. Any win in Seattle is good, but the Chargers handled that game. They were up by two scores fairly early. And, but I mean, three targets, two catches, 23 and a touch. But even the week before that, you know, or two weeks ago, because they were on the bye, four targets, four catches, 118 and a touch. And the week before that, um, four targets, three catches, 118 and two. Like, like you said, that's what Tyrell Williams does. He gets deep, he makes points on one play. And when he makes two plays, he's got 30 for you, mm-hmm. you know, but he's not doing all this work on six, seven, eight targets. He's, he's only had one game in the year where he's even had five and, but it's been a consistent three targets, four targets, four targets, three targets, five, three, 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 you know, five it's been and my, and actually Mike Williams targets are the exact same way. Three, four, three, three, four, three. So, I mean, the way they're using them is very consistent. It's just sometimes those deep balls hook up and sometimes most of the time they don't. Excuse me, but when they do, magic happens. So, you know, if, if he can go to a spot where either A, he gets signed in free agency to somebody who's going to give him six or seven targets a game to let him double his chances of getting that 12 point play, or something crazy happens and the Chargers actually keep him, but Keenan Allen's not going anywhere. Mike Williams isn't going anywhere. So if he stays with the Chargers, which is unlikely because he is going to be, you know, demanding a decent contract, then. He's, it's just, it, it's so funny how it works with wide receivers. You got to get targets to score points, you know? And obviously Tyrell Williams is doing some crazy, crazy point scoring on minimal targets, but. Which is impressive and very discouraging impressive. at the same time. That he's right. Not when you're averaging work. 29 and 30, 20, 29 yards a catch and 30 yards a catch and 39 yards a catch. Like, why wouldn't you throw me some more balls? But that's just not – they got, like you it's said – a lot of mouths to feed. They got weapons. Not just – they got solid weapons over there, and they're clicking this year, and it's, you know, Chargers – they're on a six-game, five-game winning streak, and things are looking great for the Chargers, and that doesn't mean that, that, that Tyra Williams gets any more targets because of it. So would you be trying to acquire this guy? I mean, like uh, a month ago it would have been a lot cheaper, but I think right now – it's still going to be pretty cheap because he's still going to be disrespected. You can, there's probably going to be plenty of guys who have had him and he's probably got tossed around as a, a cut candidate the first half of the season. So if all of a sudden you were at a guy that you were going to cut, you could get something for him. You're more likely to take it. Now there might be, if you, if you're one of those teams that are just struggling at wide receiver and all of a sudden Tyra Williams has been a starter for you for a, you know, don't lie to yourself. Don't let, don't lie and say you had Tyra Williams in your lineup unless it, when he scored 30 points a couple weeks ago in London, I think it was against Cleveland when he went four for 120 and two touchdowns. Like don't be, don't be fibbing. That was on your bench. You probably weren't starting unless you had a bunch of injuries and bunch of questionable people you probably didn't start tyrell williams when he went off for 30 but maybe you plugged him in the next week and he got you four for 120 and a touch and you're super excited about it maybe not maybe he did it on your bench again and you're grinding your teeth so i don't mind buying him right now because i think he can still go he's got plenty of room to go up because i don't think i don't think he's done enough for long enough to you know warrant is it too is it too too much i mean that's i've so that's an aggressive offer, I think. Um, I don't think him. it's I don't think it's too much. I hate to keep going back to the well, but if you're, you know, one of the if you're the favorite to win the championship and you got two ten, that's when you ask yourself two ten two eleven two twelve. If I had my rookie draft today, would I take Tyra Williams with two ten two eleven? Probably not two twelve. He's probably know? not there. So that's the thing about you know obviously. When you're trading draft picks mid season, it doesn't say what draft pick it is. It just says second round pick. Right. You know? So if you are if you're one of those teams that if you have one of those leagues where you play for the number one draft pick for the people that don't make the playoffs and you're on that fringe, 
I wouldn't want to give up a chance that you know if you're on the if you're if you don't make the playoffs but you have a good enough team to go win the one one therefore you get the two one. I wouldn't be itching to give away my two one for Tyrell Williams because all it takes is two games without a touchdown and you could get him for a three. Right. That's the point. Right. You know if you're you're probably not going to look for Tyrell Williams to plug him into your lineup anyway. Like you're saying, you're probably playing him for next year, kind of like Elijah McGuire, but different because he's not a running back. And there's wide receivers everywhere, a la Tyrell Tyrell Williams pops up, and he's a starter right now. But all it takes is two more games where he gets three targets, one catch for 10 yards. So would you sell him for a two? I wouldn't mind it. I would sell him for that guy who is, you know, that early two-ish guy, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Now, again, this is one of those places where – if you got Tyrell Williams on your team, you probably have a bigger bench league or either you have a smaller bench league and you just picked him up off of waivers last two weeks ago when he started doing work or you were in love with him from two years ago and you're just a holder mm-hmm. like a Jay Wayne. Mm-hmm. Jay Wayne ain't trying to move nobody. He's got people <laughs> growing beards on their bench. But, you know, like... Keenan Allen has a beard. Growing gray beards. You know, you got people gray and balding going bald on the bench. Like, that's you're a holder. And there's nothing... Hey, I just sold Tyrell Williams. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you I did. Sold you him. Uh, there was a. I'm in a group chat in one of our leagues, and I rarely pay attention to it because it's on Twitter, and I, I really hate Twitter. It just sucks. Hit me up at Jay Wayne's World. <laughs> uh, it's it's just so disheartening to scroll through Twitter and listen and read what everybody says and thinks they know. It was just it's worse. Than I love. This, I'm there for the stats. It's, ro- it's worse I'm, than Roto World. I'm there for the stats. Uh. And I see in this chat, I just happened to see it come through a little message that I hadn't muted that day. And it said, I'm looking, I got running backs for sale. And I was like, what kind of an idiot has running backs for sale? I'm going to go <laughs> check this out. Right. And so he had some solid, uh, try, first went after Philip Lindsay, didn't want to part with him. So then I was like, all right, well, let me get Alex Collins. And he wanted Tyler Lockett. And I was like, what about Tyrell? He's like, I like Tyrell. And we ended up getting a deal done. I sent him Tyrell in a 19 second for Alex Collins in a 2023rd. Okay. And I That's, probably would have done it without getting the third back. But I was like, oh, I'm going to be big Kobe. Kobe's going to be mad at me if I don't try, at least try to get the next round's pick back. Right. I'm, 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 I'm taking it on the chin around here in the local leagues with Jay Wayne and Casey Bo. Well, Casey's, he, he, he holds his own, but both of you guys are not huge traders. But I'm open book to you guys, and that's a good trade. It is. And, I, I mean, uh, so I took a we, guy who's had, a little we, high right we now spent, and went and got a running back. We spent, I, I would we spent advocate weeks, doing that. We spent weeks talking about buying Alex Collins low, mm-hmm. and I think you did that. There's no doubt in my mind you did that. I know you paid a lot less for Tyrell Williams than he paid for Alex Collins. Right. So that was a great pickup for you. Um, and it, but it's interesting, while we're on the Tyrell Williams, is that you chose to give away Tyrell Williams over Tyler Lockett. Care right. to explain the logic there? I don't know. I The cult following of Tyler Lockett? I feel like he gets more respect, and that okay. if I was going to move Tyler Lockett, I could probably get more for him than Tyrell. All right. Uh, I also feel like he's been more consistent this year. Oh, although, no doubt about it. He had a touchdown like every game for a right. while. Yeah. So he's been a staple in my lineup in that league. This is a 16-team league, so right. it's a very big league. Right. And uh, I, I'm, I'm okay at running back right now. I got uh, I got Christian McCaffrey and Duke Johnson and well, Lamar Miller. We'll talk about Duke later, but you didn't. Duke Johnson wasn't Duke Johnson before last week, so don't pretend like that was somebody you were leaning on. I mean, I've been playing. I mean, it's, it's a sixteen-team <laughs> league, man. Okay, it's hard out enough. there. Fair enough. It's hard out there. All right, wait, wait, pause, pause. Did you? Would you have get if you you're in you know engaged in some big co trade tactics? Uh-huh. But let's be honest, since the <laughs> trade's already gone down, mm-hmm. would you have given him Tyler Lockett for Alex Collins if you had to? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough, but he wanted a two, two though, and I was like, "Come on, man!" Right, but you know, you're you're calling his bluff and and moving around right, and seeing right. what you can do, and I I don't know, I don't know what maybe want to keep Tyler over Tyrell. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Tyrell. I've been on Tyrell for a while. I liked him. There's just something about having a guy in your lineup scoring points for a couple weeks, and it gives you confidence. And it, that this was what two weeks ago. This was. I let's see the Ravens were on. It was yeah, it happened before last week. Okay, because so I've had Alex Collins for one week. Okay, all right, um, and I actually plugged him in over Duke, 
Right. And who knew? Dude crushed it. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took point that trade got you negative negative right. points. <laughs> negative twenty, right. right. So Alex Collins still got me his twelve or thirteen or whatever he's been doing all year long. And yeah. I won this week. Nice. Uh and then this week it's a super flex league. So this week I got uh Jared Goff on a buy. And so I gotta plug in an extra player. Now you can plug in Alex and Duke. Right. There you go. So Okay, fair enough. I just wanted to ask you about the Tyrell Williams versus yeah. Tyler Lockett. It's interesting. I'm not sure why I was like No on I Tyler can't Lockett. do Ty- Tyler, but let me do Tyrell. I don't know. I don't know what that was. People have personal connections to players, man. And I can't even really explain it. I like them both. Uh, I just, I guess I feel more comfortable having Tyler Lockett. The Tyler, the Tyler Williams, uh, Tyrell Williams lows were low and he wasn't hurt. You make the excuse for Tyler Lockett when he's hurt. Right. Well, I mean, it is a built in excuse. You cannot catch balls if your knee is torn. Right. It is a proven fact. And so if you're on the IR because your knee blew off, you can't Ty- catch balls. Tyler's younger than Tyrell. Tyrell's an old player ish. He's he's twenty six and a half. Fair enough. Good point. Tyler Tyler's a little younger. Tyler is is just got paid and is going to be wrapped up with Russell Wilson for the True. next foreseeable future. I don't know what's going to happen with Tyrell. Right. And we, and let's be honest. We all knew who Tyler Lockett was going into the draft. Right. And going into the NFL draft. Thank you. Reception. And we were loving perception. him coming out of Kansas State. And. Nobody knew who Tyrell Williams was. Right. So you get you start higher and you do a little something and you start lower and you do a little something. You're not necessarily at the same place in our hearts. Do a Fair little enough. dance. Make do a little, a little dance. Make a little love. <laughs> so there you go, Tyrell Williams. I mean, I got no problem with you buying right now because it's a little blip on the radar. It's obviously more than you would have paid last month, but I wouldn't go overpaying based on the fact that he is completely not confident start to me. Right. Like we Casey and I plugged him in in the league this year this week because we needed to and it paid off. Right. And you know, got Tyler Boyd on a bye and plug in Tyra Williams and you get your touchdown. Right. But, you know, next again, next week he gets another three targets and he might hit you with that, you know, 3 for 22 like he did in week 3. Right. And you got five it's, points. It's volatile. Very volatile. And right now it's on the up. Right now it's hot. There's so many things that you could do with Tyrell that I would be comfortable with, whether that's buy, sell, hold. Right. You right. know, you could package this guy up with a pick and go improve your player. Yeah. You know, that's something you love to do. Yeah. If you wanted, you know, I, I saw a guy who wanted a running back and he ne- or he, he wanted a wide receiver to score points. He's His team was struggling with wide receivers, which is a rarity. Right. And a guy that's down to like I have a team that's struggling with with wide receivers. Of course, I did just get Keenan Allen off some late night trade that I didn't even remember sending Ooh, out. I don't even want to talk about that right now. Traded Deion Lewis in a second. Today I ended up with Keenan Allen. I from cannot that. believe that you just got Keenan Allen in that league for Deion Lewis in the two. It's pretty. It's only a twelve man league. There's no excuses. I mean, if it was a thirty-two man league and you didn't have a wide receiver to a running back to start, I guess. But you don't go. Right. That's that was a redraft trade. I don't yeah. want to get too far off of Tyrell Williams, but let, you brought it up. I did. I I tried to push. push yeah. I tried to kick the can down the road right. on this trade. But why? Right. Let me tell you what we'd be telling our Patreon members to not <laughs> accept that offer. To not do that. Yeah. Like when we got plenty of things, we don't just go pat people on the butt all the time on Patreon and say, "Yeah, take that trade." A lot right. of trades come off our desk, and we say, "Absolutely don't do not." It. Don't do and it. And then we go into reasons why, and, and sometimes we're like, "Immediately accept it. Don't play any games." They might be shopping that that trade's too good to to play and try to get a third rounder back or mm-hmm. anything like that. And this guy, you sent out Dion Lewis in a two last week after he has a twenty point game. It was and, last, and then he had another twenty point game this and week, and that's why I accepted it. Yep. If you need a running back, you do not take Keenan Allen and right. go get Deion Lewis in a second round pick for Keenan Allen. That right. is not how you play this. I love running backs and I dismiss some wide receivers in my day. That's how I play this mm-hmm. game because I can strum up the wide receivers. But you do not go <laughs> down from <laughs> Keenan Allen to a two game heater, Deion Lewis. And yeah, don't get me wrong. Obviously, coming out of the bye week, the Titans said, hey, two weeks ago, Deion Lewis was our. They've pretty much gotten their their Derrick Henry's not even a thing right now. And if you and, look at the snap share, it's it's half. And but the touch share is not even close. And, and Deion Lewis. Would no, the, I mean, like Derrick Henry's getting half the snaps as Deion Lewis. Yeah, but Deion the touch is going up, and the but touches, Deion's right. getting Deion's getting carries. Well, it, it's and like, he's getting catches. It's similar to a Tyreek uh, or Tariq Cohen situation where that uh, offense just runs better with Deion Lewis in it. Couldn't couldn't agree more because he can run it between the tackles and he's he's great. But in the Jordan Howard game. is a way better running back than Derrick Henry. So, sure. Anyway, 
you don't go from Keenan Allen to Derek to, to uh, Deion Lewis in a two. I don't care if Deion Lewis has a couple of good games in a row. You don't do that. And that was a great trade for you. Samaje Toise on the up. And that, that's a good offer to send out to get the conversation started. Right. And he's and you had no you had zero confidence he was going to accept that trade offer. No, I forgot about it. Right. I didn't even remember sending it. And then it happened. And then a week later, because of the deadline, it stays up for seven days. Okay. And I didn't take it down. And today you came in and you were like, you got Keenan Allen in the, in one of the home leagues? And oh, I was like, I do? Really upset. So you're Samaje Toi, right? I was like, yeah. Yeah. I got Keenan. All right. Not happy about it. Awesome. All right, well, that'll wrap up uh, Keenan Dion and Tyrell. <laughs> Alex Collins got Alex in there Collins somehow. somehow. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll be back with the other Williams brother, Mike Dub, for your pleasure. <laughs> 